Well, uh, welcome everybody here at the gallery. Um, I'm trying to uh, get the nice atmosphere here. The temperature is quite okay, I guess, so I invited a few more people. Uh, my name is Emil Brock. I am uh, working for SUSE, and I'm going to tell you uh, about the new SUSE academic program. So um, if you have any questions during the talk, please uh, jump in at any time. So what we'll I'll talk about in the next hour, I'll try to keep it under an hour. Um, I'll first uh, explain who am I and why am I standing here. Uh, second, I will talk about uh, why SUSE came up with an academic program. After that, um, we'll um, talk through the academic program, the new SUSE academic program. What does it mean? What does it uh, contain? Uh, the different levels that are built into the new program, and um, at the end, uh, I've got a real call for action for all of you, so please um, uh, stick to there. Um, and then Q&A at the end, but as I said, please uh, interrupt at any time. So, um, why me? Um, I've been working now for SUSE for two years, and I am responsible and getting paid to have... Hello, somebody's waving. Do you want me to stay over there? Oh, okay. So, uh, oh, I have to stay in this box. All right, I'll try. Um, so, uh, professionally, I'm working for SUSE, and I'm responsible for the commercial training program. I'm managing all the training partners in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and um, that is quite successful. And uh, at that time, when I started with um, managing and setting up a program to get as many people as possible uh, trained in SUSE, we realized that we were forgetting the students. But it was just a matter of uh, we can do only one thing at a time. So now, two years later, um, the whole commercial program for commercial training institutes is working quite well in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So now it is uh, time to um, come up with an um, academic program uh, coming from the uh, corporate company, Susan. My background, um, as I said, I'm working for two years for SUSE, but before that, I worked for 10 years for a Linux uh, consultancy and training company in the Netherlands, and I am the founder of LPI, uh, together with other open source uh, ambassadors in uh, the Netherlands and uh, Belgium. So um, I've been working on uh, getting students to work with uh, Linux for many years. And uh, as I said, now the chameleon came into my uh, life and um, I'm quite active on social media. So if you like to say something about this talk, then um, uh, look at uh, hashtag Kiko on tour. Uh, I'm active on the most uh, platforms. So um, uh, if you want to have anything to share, uh, please do so. And looking forward to your uh, feedback. So now to the academic program. Um, I have been um, trying to get universities of applied science, uh, different uh, IT schools to work with uh, Linux and open source in general for many years. And when I started, about 12 years ago now, I was quite um, shouting in the desert. It was just me. And when I was talking to um, many uh, University of Applied Science, it was quite often that um, there was not much uh, response um, because at that time the classes were just dominated by proprietary software solutions. And at that time there were some reasons why it should be at, um, focused on the proprietary solutions. But the world has changed. And um, when you're going to uh, lobby, try to get uh, people enthusiastic, um, IT instructors, to be enth enthusiastic about uh, training in Linux, training in open source, it is uh, important that you make uh, differentiation what you focus on. Um, last year at this conference I did a talk uh, on uh, many recommendations how you can get your school to work with Linux and open source. And um, one of the recommendations I had is make sure that you are clear what you're talking about. In this case, I try to be uh, clear. The SUSE academic program that's been released 
uh, fits very well to the curriculum. So what are the IT teachers uh, uh, training? And um, also on operations. The desktop is not that dominant in the academic program. You can use it, but um, actually yesterday here, I learned that there is a, a sort of open SUSE academic program uh, being set up, but that's very early stage. So I expect you will hear, about, hear more about that in the next months and probably um, next year here at SUSE, at Open SUSE Conf, there will be a talk on the uh, open, uh, um, open SUSE academic program. But now we focus on uh, operations and on curriculum. It's quite difficult for me to stay inside this box. Do I really have to stay? Can I not do? No? Oh, I'm told to be here. Um, so why is it important? Why is it important to have an academic program at all? Why is that important? It's um, important that the schools are bringing uh, people to the, uh, to the labor market that actually fit the profile. So if you look at uh, open source technology, um, a couple of years ago, we did an investigation, a true survey in uh, the Netherlands, and we investigated how was the connection between the number of uh, open source um, people finishing university compared to the demand in the labor market. And what we found there is what we've defined as the open generation gap. So the open generation gap is the difference between what the labor market wants compared to the number of uh, students finishing in the technology of Linux. And when I say Linux, I am talking about more wider than just Linux, because I think open source technology in totally is important. But that's the open generation gap. And the open generation gap was there in the Netherlands. And because I've been working for LPI, which is a, a global organization, I am quite um, have the guts to say that it was a worldwide uh, challenge at that time. Anybody in the room here today uh, who is an IT teacher? Yes, one of a couple of IT teachers. All right, and um, you're obviously, because you hear you're training uh, Linux to students. Computer science, okay. Linux and open source methodologies, yes. All right, excellent, excellent. And you've been doing that for many, many years? For three years. Three years, okay. And um, why is it now since three years that you're uh, now training into uh, Linux technologies and before that not? No one else was doing it before. Right. And but there was a demand. There, there is a, a misunderstood demand. The, the students don't know, they only know what their teachers tell them and the existing faculty didn't, like you said, there was a generation gap They've grown up in a different non-open source environment, so they don't know how to teach it. And so there needs to be a bridge that comes across there, and I'm trying to help bridge that gap. Oh, fantastic. Keep on the good work. And we might have something for you, uh, for your students. Um, so that's the academic program in total, and that's for um, Linux independent technology. So um, whatever distribution, as long as it's Linux, I'm fine with that. But as I'm working for SUSE, and I think uh, OpenSUSE and SLES are fantastic uh, distributions, if you have to teach students Linux, why not do it in SUSE technology? Anybody, another argument for not doing it in SUSE technology? Well... If you would have asked me three years ago, I would have said, I don't really mind if it's uh, SUSE or any of the other distribution. I think Debian, to be honest, is quite um, an important distribution as well. So, um, yeah, I like SUSE a lot, and I, I love the Geeko. I travel around with him anywhere, or her. It's actually not known if it's him or her. But um, it, it is important that uh, different distributions are being taught as long as the market demands uh, several, uh, I say that, distribution knowledge, so knowledge in the different distributions. Why not have the University of Applied Science also teaching the different technologies? Anybody disagree with me? Please do so. No? 
Okay, so we all like SUSE and we all like and understand that uh, other distributions are important as well. Okay, so now SUSE came with an academic program. Um, anybody an ID why is why SUSE is interested in uh, coming up with an academic program? Potential employees. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very, uh, very good reason, actually, because we've got more than 100 uh, vacancies at the moment at SUSE. So if you're into SUSE technology and uh, you like to work for us, um, have a look at uh, the jobs we have. So absolutely, for our own uh, reason, to have more people uh, knowing about SUSE. So um, they will um, probably easier uh, apply for a job with us. So absolutely. Another reason? Uh, lowers barriers to market. Can you explain a little bit who was saying that? Because I'm looking into a lamp. Oh, over there. Hey, Doug. <laughs> it basically gets people uh, knowledgeable of open source and early age. And of course, as they go in and they become managers or things of that nature, they're familiar with it. It's it just it's a knowledge aspect and it has potential economic uh, benefit to SUSE. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why SUSE came up with an academic program. And um, here we are. So uh, what you see is the academic program. What does it uh, focus on? It focuses on, on um, getting trained as an instructor and teaching uh, SUSE technology, um, developing on SUSE, and, and using SUSE. Those three elements are uh, the elements that are now into the academic program of uh, SUSE involved. Um, when I say uh, SUSE technology, I'm not just talking about SLES. Um, as you probably have seen here at the conference, and you already know, but many people still understand and still see uh, SUSE as just a Linux company. But um, our technologies, uh, that we focus on, the open source technologies, are more spread than just SLES. So also the academic program focuses on storage, cloud, SUSE manager, and of course still SLES. And when you're going to train uh, students and teachers, first the teachers and then students, at least that's the way it should go, uh, in SUSE technology there is certification available as well. So it's not just uh, the training and it's not just um, uh, getting the, the, the students um, up to the right level of knowledge. There is even possibility, if you are a university, to test this knowledge uh, by using the, uh, the same certification model as is being used in the commercial uh, SUSE industry. So we've got uh, a certification overview. At the bottom, uh, you've got the administrator level, and on top of that, engineer level. And if you have gathered a whole bunch of the uh, certifications below, you can become an architect in SUSE. Um, but it starts with uh, certification, and then all the four technologies I just mentioned, you can get administrator level certification, and on top of that, engineer level certification. Any people certified in any of the SUSE technologies here? Somebody in the back there, yes? Great. Only one person? Oh, that's something we have to get up then. We have to get up that um, people that are using SUSE technology that they are certified in it as well. And um, that's where actually one of the goals of um, a SUSE academic program as well, to get more people certified. So let's do a little a bit of a recap. Um, as I said, two years ago when I started with SUSE, there was no academic program. So when uh, people came to me and asked, can I use the training material that SUSE has developed for the commercial market? Can I use it for my students? The answer was no. Unfortunately, it was not possible and not allowed. So we had to come with an academic program. And before that, um, there were, of course, universities and um, uh, different technical educations non-profit educations that we had in our um, as our customer base and we had different models for them but um, we kept on supporting that model but we didn't welcome any new universities anymore at that time and now we have our academic program with 
where everybody can uh, join in. So if we look at the academic uh, program of SUSE, as I said, it focuses on the two elements, the element of the operations, that's just um, uh, the software that the school uses for um, their infrastructure, and the curriculum. How is it built up? Here is this, this slide again. So it's about getting trained, the instructors, getting trained, the uh, students. Um, if you like to develop further on the technology, that's built in the model as well. And of course, uh, we like to uh, uh, the software to be used by the students. So what does it look like? There is uh, three layers. And the first layer, um, it's totally out of cost. So there is no fee. Uh, there is no um, uh, minimum order. There are not many demands other than you have to be a university. So if you want to become part of our SUSE academic program, um, everybody can become a uh, part of our program as long as um, you're uh, a non-profit uh, educational institute. Can you read this? Is this all? Uh, no, it's too small, right? Um, so I'll do a little bit of uh, uh, fruit picking here. Um, if you sign up to this level of the pro program, you will get uh, free access to all the training material we have available. And um, you will get a, a campus license to use uh, SUSE. Um, we will even make certification available, and that's being developed right now for the commercial institutes. If uh, somebody in the labor market wants to become certified, the cost for an exam to become uh, SUSE certified are between 150 and 195 US dollar per exam. For the uh, academic institutions, we are developing right now a bulk model, which will be a lot, a lot cheaper. We are really trying to get the, um, the boundary to become certified. If you are a, um, a SUSE technologist or student and you're like SUSE and you want to do the exam, that it's very easy to become um, certified and also very cheap. Um, free, as, uh, free access to the SDK as well, so the software development kit is part of this first layer as well. And then um, uh, yeah, that's I think that's the most important things uh, out of the first layer. Then there is a second layer and that's actually when you're going to talk about uh, the software that the university uh, are using yourself. Um, so if a university is already uh, using SUSE, they can use it, and if they want to use a lot of technologies and a lot of uh, products of us, uh, compared to the commercial market, there is a very, very low entry and a, um, a cheap model where you still can get all the services and all the support that a commercial company uh, gets as well. And there is a third layer. If you really want to go deep into the technology as a university, it's not about teaching, this is about using the uh, software for your own, um, for your own, own I say that your own um, environment, your own infrastructure. Um, so that's the three-layer model that um, the SUSE academic program uh, consists of. Is that clear? Any questions on the three steps model? Okay, then I'll move on. This is even more detail about the uh, new academic program. Um, in the description of this talk, I promise to give detail about academic programs, so I will. Um, but I will glance over it. Um, so if we look here at the first pillar, uh, the education. Um, there is training material and certification available for all uh, teachers, but compared to the commercial model, it's not... Um, you don't have to be certified as an instructor before you teach it. So we made it again as uh, low boundary as possible, but on the other hand, it's not mandatory, but I do recommend 
that as an instructor, you look at the certification and you try the exams before you go and teach it, but it's not mandatory. It's all uh, focused on getting as many people as possible trained in SUSE. Um, so there will be a specific material. There is specific material which is uh, only to use for non-profit and non-commercial uh, institutions, and it will be uh, clearly signed as material for this uh, uh, market. And of course, it's not allowed to use the material outside these uh, non-commercial institutes, because we've got a commercial training program where actually the goal is not to make money for SUSE, so we're not making money on the, SUSE, on the training material. What we do is we try to get as many people as possible trained in the technology. So again, there is no commercial, but um, we do have commercial training partners, not as ourselves, but uh, training partners. Like here in uh, Germany, uh, one of the training partners that pops up in my mind is B1. I've seen many people from B1 here as well. They are a training partner here in Germany, and um, that's a commercial training partner. Um, besides the training material um, just on on paper, there is also on-demand training material available for the uh, academic institutions. So if you want to um, get your knowledge up to level, there are different possibilities uh, to get there. So the second um, uh, pi pillar, that's a lot about uh, if you're using uh, SUSE technology in your infrastructure. Um, the third is more if you want to use the tools, so the software development kit, and if you really want go want to go deep into the technology, you might like to be uh, like be interested. If you're really teaching um, high level technology and your students, then um, this uh, pillar is uh, interesting because uh, we deliver a lot of. Um, possibilities that are normally only offered for commercial institutions and now also available for academic institutions. And then we are setting up an academic program and uh, one of the first things in um, September 25th till the 29th of September in Prague there will be the SUSECOM. I don't know if uh, any of the Open SUSE people know about that but we've got a big conference coming up and that's uh, Quite big fun, I must say. Fun, uh, very informative, uh, from technical talks to uh, informative talks. Uh, great examples of where the technology has been used in uh, with customers of uh, SUSE. And um, I can um, say out of my own experience visiting now uh, two SUSE cons that it's uh, really uh, something great to go to. And also if you're an instructor and you want to take t uh, students to Prague, um, it's a great possibility, and there is high discount offered for universities, academic institutions that are part of an academic program. If you want to know exact uh, discount on the tickets and everything, uh, please come to me afterwards. I'll uh, uh, dis uh, explain how the model works. But all this meant that we have a lot of university and a lot of young people coming to SUSECOM. So here's the promised call to action. Um, it's quite easy, actually, the call to action. Because um, it's just uh, go to the website, www.suse.com slash academic, and uh, subscribe. You just subscribe there, and uh, if you want to become part of the academic program and you're uh, recognized as a non-commercial institute, so you uh, fulfill the requirements, then uh, literally, uh, immediately you are part of a program and you can uh, benefit from the uh, benefits. Once you are um, allowed into the program, you will have access to a special portal. It's built by uh, SUSE and this portal will give you access to the uh, on-demand training I talked about, will give you access to uh, all sorts of things, um, how you can get your knowledge up to speed, how the certification work, all explanation about uh, further details of the program. Then I've got the Raspberry Pi here. I actually took one with me. Um, we've got ARM here and a Raspberry Pi. 
I think that, and it's totally out of the um, the academic program of uh, SUSE actually, but when I've been looking at the uh, market for universities to be able to train SUSE, I think the Raspberry Pi with SUSE, because uh, it's now all available without cost for a year to use, uh, uh, to, to run slash on the Raspberry Pi. Does anybody of you uh, agree with me that it can be a great step forward to teach uh, SUSE technologies using a Raspberry Pi? Wow, a lot of, yes. Um, can you explain? Yeah, so I'll, I'll quickly repeat, otherwise they have to run up with the microphone all. Um, it's very easy. <laughs> That's basically what you said. Um, and the explanation we got, it was launched at SUSECON in Washington last year. What, How they explained it, and I liked it quite a lot, was done by Aaron Quill, one of our high technology architects. Uh, probably uh, has another function name, but he's quite a cool guy. And he had a picture of himself working on a machine in 19-something long ago. And he was working on that machine at home when he was about 12 years old. And when he was working on that machine and he came into the real world where uh, information technology was being used, he found that what he learned on that machine he had at home uh, wasn't really useful to him. But if we were able to uh, close the gap between the machine that you use at home and the machines that are being used until the very biggest machines, the mainframes, because also mainframe run on SUSE, then you can have the whole... Um, line of machines from RM, RM machines, uh, Raspberry Pis, until the mainframe and everything in between runs on SUSE. So I thought that aspect is really great why it's now fantastic to have uh, Slash available on uh, the Raspberry Pi. I was trying to switch but it doesn't have the button so let's do it like this. Um, yeah, well here is the SUSECon. Uh, as I said, SUSECON uh, in September, and um, well, not that far away from here. Uh, so you're all very welcome, and um, especially the people from academic institutions uh, where we have the special uh, program for. Um, so two call for actions, actually. Uh, like to see you again at uh, SUSECON 2017 in uh, Prague, and uh, you can go to the website www susan.com slash academic subscribe there and uh, you're all welcome any questions at this point about the academic program would you like to use the microphone yes is susan willing to share uh, next to their code base also stuff like this with the open social community um i sorry i, I don't understand what uh, what are what is susa not sharing with open susa is that um, is there something we are not sharing you're talking about uh, the material being well in fact closed to outsiders um could open susa people have access to the material to use it for open susa trainings Oh, the training material, uh, that's available. I, you're talking about the training material that we've developed at yeah. SUSE mm -hmm. that's uh, being used to train um, both um, our customers, partners, and now also students, if it's also available for uh, uh, people from the Open SUSE community. Yeah. That's your question. Um, it's a good question. Um, we have got our material available um, through the training partners. So if you are known with the training partner, as I said, in Germany, we've got four partners, in the Netherlands, one. Um, all over EMEA, there are 40 training partners. And um, they are now responsible for dividing and uh, delivering the training, including training material, to the market in those countries. So if you have specific questions 
um, you can either come to me, I can tell you who is uh, delivering the training material in your country, and then it's up to the commercial training company and you to find a solution. And um, if you're working for a university, it's even easier because then you have access through the material to the academic program. I hope that answers your questions. Uh, yes. yes, it does. All right, great. Thank you very much. Great question, actually. I didn't think about that aspect of the training material uh, being available. Any other questions? Um, yes. Uh, you have been talking about uh, yeah, academic institute or organizations in general, but also very often you have mentioned universities. So I have kind of contacts with some local university and also some IT schools. So I would like to know if, if there is any difference uh, regarding the program for from a university or something such a small, let's say. Yeah. As no, a, yes, uh, yeah. Excellent question. Uh, there are quite clear uh, regulations set up. And actually, it, come all, it all comes down to as long as it doesn't compete with my uh, commercial training partners, then I'm fine. So um, if it's a very small uh, academic institute and they have no commercial um, side business or something, then absolutely everybody is very welcome to, uh, to join the academic program. In fact, once you subscribe, depending on where you are in the world, um, we will look for every single person, every single um, uh, subscription to the academic program if it's truly academic. But we even have like uh, the police school in the Netherlands, the military schools, those kind of institutions are also fulfilling the, um, the requirements. So we are not strict as long as it's not interfering with the commercial training business. Is that a clear answer to your question? Yes? Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to hear the uh, institutions you're talking about. Any other questions? Yeah, <clears throat> I would like to know, um, in the past there was a CompTIA here. Oh, there. Hey, Hi. in the back. Hi. <laughs> uh, in the past, there was a CompTIA training uh, certification, uh, including LPI, SUSE, and CompTIA as well. Is this going to be the case in the future? Again, a very good question. Have you been talking about this before? A very good question. Um, at LPI, CompTIA, and SUSE, there was a cooperation uh, regarding the certification. If you did the CompTIA certification, you would get the uh, SUSE administrator uh, Linux level and the LPI uh, level one alongside. Um, from SUSE, we had to stop that project because we had people um, certifying for SUSE technology while they never ever touched the SUSE machine. And that was a challenge we had to deal with. So we had to figure something out. And we have actually came up with a solution for that. Because if you are now, um, I don't know if I can easily get the picture back with the certification, but we've got the certification in different levels. And what we did now is if you think um, because of your uh, CompTIA or LPI certification that you qualify for the uh, higher level, so the engineer level certification, you can straight go to that exam skip the lower level exam, and if you pass the higher level exam, you will get backwards also the lower level exam. That means that uh, we have covered that everybody who has got a SUSE certification knows the technology, but you still have the uh, biggest uh, pro of that old model, that if you are LPI of or CompTIA certified for Linux technology in general, and you prove to us that you also know SUSE technology by succeeding the other exam, you don't have to do two exams, only one exam, and you're, uh, you're ready, and you're uh, certified at the highest level. Okay, thank you. Is um, that clear? Yeah. Okay. Yes, thanks. Uh, another question, uh, Linux Foundation has also on certification by now. How uh, is uh, our or SUSE's academic process influencing or um, in regards to that? Uh, it's, it's the same. So the same. it's the same as LPI and CompTIA. There are a few minor differences, but um, it's about the same ID. So if you prove to be uh, certified at Linux technology at the entry level, you can go into the higher level of SUSE certification. And once you pass, you get the other one uh, afterwards. So it works the same. 
Great questions, actually. Really good. Uh, so, Doc. next question. Yes. Um, what was the decision to actually uh, look at ruling out the private universities and in any for-profit, or, or did you come up with a model? Are you talking about coming up with a model for uh, private universities or even charter schools we look at? And in that case, they're sort of private. They make money. You know, I, I mean, it, it seems like you're, you're, the program, while good, yes, uh, is ruling out a, a certain area I think we would want to address. Yeah. And perhaps, I mean, maybe it's somewhere in between the commercial and and the uh, um, non nonprofit school. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're perfectly right. It is a gray area. In the Netherlands, we've got companies who are sort of training students, but they have a commercial goal. Um, there are clear guidelines, and we will keep those guidelines. Um, we'll look at them and judge whether or not it's competing. But um, for some countries, I will look into it if it's not competing with my commercial institutions. And if my commercial training partners don't mind, that that specific commercial academy becomes uh, part of the academic program, then I'm fine with it as well. So the, the main goal of SUSE is to train as many people as possible in SUSE technology, color as many people as possible green. But we only can do that if the commercial training partners are having a good business case. And if we are destroying the business case of the commercial training partners, we will have no commercial institutions who bring our training to the market. So that's basically the challenge that we're dealing with. But the gray area, I'm willing to look at the gray area and see if we can come up with a solution, uh, if they either have to fit into the commercial model or in the academic model. So please start a discussion and we will find some way to get as many people as possible colored green. Any other questions here in the front? Thanks. Um, how do you plan to advertise the program? Do you plan to go directly to universities and advertise it or go to university fairs yeah. or what is the plan? Wow, those questions, really good. Uh, this, uh, this is more about the marketing. Um, we've decided that uh, we create an academic program because there was a demand. There was a demand from academic institutions to come up with a program. So that's what we did. But uh, the focus of SUSE is on uh, uh, helping customers and uh, selling subscriptions, uh, getting happy customers. And what we've done, we've created a program, and our goal and, and maybe hope is that the program will totally sustain itself. So everything should be available and there are uh, people picking up the phone if you have specific questions so we've got two people uh, one for EMEA one for the rest of the world who's picking up the phone if you have a question about the academic program but we're trying to keep it that uh, low um, how say that labor so that we don't have to invest too much time in getting it but on the other hand I was allowed by SUSE to come up here to come to Nuremberg and to present the academic program. And I've been presenting it two weeks ago in the Netherlands, and I will do it a couple of more times at different places. So that is the marketing. Um, but we really hope that it will sort of fly off itself because we think we've created a program which has such a low boundaries. As an academic institute, why would you not enter this program? If you compare it to commercial vendors who have academic programs, then they quite often are uh, you have to pay a certain amount, or there, there are all kinds of um, boundaries you have to get over. Well, this program, that's how we hope it will work. If it doesn't work like this, so if not enough people know about the academic program in some time, we will evaluate it and we will start a marketing campaign. Is that a satisfactory answer? Somehow, somehow. Yeah, you think, yeah. Yes and no. Um, <laughs> well, if it will work out like this, um, we will see. But um, if it doesn't work out, we will pick it up and bring it to a, a higher marketing level. But um, maybe the, if the OpenSUSE community likes it a lot, and you all here at this room uh, like the ID, what we all can do is bring it to social media, shout it out, tell it to everybody you know that there is a very easy to uh, to subscribe to 
academic program and let the word of mouth, as it's called, do its work. Any other questions? No? Oh, that's excellent. Well, thank you very much. And I really want to thank you specifically for those questions at the end, because they were really, really great questions. Um, again, remember, um, this is the website. Uh, that's the marketing uh, we do for now. And if you have any questions about the academic program, feel free to uh, approach me at any time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>